Hi guys, welcome to another video. In this video, um, I'm going to be fitting sound to this lovely Class 101 by Graham Farish. Uh, this is the latest version, I believe, of this loco from Graham Farish. This one doesn't come with factory fitted sound, so I'm going to fit sound. Um, and what we're going to use is, it's actually a, a U2's chip in shrink wrap or heat shrink. So it's not a TTS uh, decoder this time. It's a proper, I say proper, it should be a better quality sound chip that we're going to be using. Um, but also we're going to have to find space for a speaker. And we'll go from there really. Uh, I know the loco works, it's lovely, the lights all work, that's all been tested. So I'm not going to show you all that. What I'm going to do is just show you how to get in the loco and the dummy will be the same as the main loco. Um, because because I'll be fitting sound into one of the DMUs, uh, I'm, I'm just going to put a decoder in the other DMU. So in short, what I'll be doing is making the, the dummy copy the main loco with the motor in it. Um, but it will do the reverse light wise so when the power goes forwards the, the lights will come on forwards the forward running lights but the dummies uh, rear most lights will come on so and then they'll alternate when I go forwards and backwards but I'll show you that later anyway with the running it'll make up it'll make a bit of sense then um, but really what I'm going to do this one's a relatively straightforward setup because this loco is ready for sound to go into it except I'm not going to be putting Graham Farish um, sound equipment into this. This is a Zimo um, sound chip uh, and, and like I said I think it's from YouTube's. I've got it second hand. Uh, I am cheating a little bit here right so this is actually a class 108 um, but in my eyes it's gonna it, this is the local I want to have sound in got the chip quite cheap um, and I think the sound is good enough to be this loco in my eyes it might not be 100% for everybody, everybody but for me it'll do just the ticket um, I'll put in the description if I can find out what this is but I don't really know you might be able to identify this sound chip um, all I know is it's got a class 108 on it there the speaker was and it works this is a six, six pin chip um, I will actually measure this in a minute so you've got an idea of how big it is because that might help decipher what decoder it is but um, I've already bench tested it on my uh, sound decoder or my, my decoder tester if you like my bench one so I know the decoder works so the next thing really is what I'm going to show you is how to get into these shells or the power car will be the same as, as the dummy as I said but I'll show you how to get into the dummy car and then I'll show you my solution for fitting a speaker and the chip. So let's get on with the video. Okay, so right off the bat, what I'm going to do is just measure this chip for your reference. Um, I can't tell you exactly what it is because I don't know. Basically, it works and I'm leaving it well alone. I know this heat shrink is what somebody's added. So I'm not going to measure the actual chip. What I'm going to do is just measure the width. So that's 11 millimeters. Now I'm going to go not to the end of the pin, I'm going to go to the um, end of this chip here, roughly, to where that block is. So that would be 30 and a half mil, and sod it, let's do the pins, 33 and a half, and then the thickest part of it, mm, just under 5 mil, so hopefully that will help you identify what this is. There's a silver mark there on the chip, that's pin one, and these wires coming out of the speaker. So that's all I need to get on with this. Now if you get a sound chip from say youtube.com, somewhere like that, um, I'm pretty sure this is a Zimo chip. Uh, don't quote me on this, I think it's like a 649 or something. Um, but go and have a look, um, because they do guides on uh, basically what I'm just about to show you. Um, and they they can recommend which chip to put in your loco but I just wanted you to see that you don't need in fact you don't need a loco that's DC ready DCC ready even um, you can pick and choose whatever loco you want in this day and age you can um, convert anything really so the first thing I want to do I'll put this chip to one side so it's safe 
we've got to get into this. Um, so these are a bit awkward sometimes. Um, I've got a class 150 that I think is in the previous video actually. And that was just as awkward to get into as this. The shells seem to be quite tight on the body. Now I'm going to use some cocktail sticks here and just just like work it under the body like that. And fingers crossed, it should pop right off. I'm just going to turn this over so we've still got them two sort of pried in there. Uh, you have still got to be careful because you could still mess the paint up. See how I just slid there? That wasn't very cool. Mm -hmm. They are they're pretty tight fitting shells, I've got to say. So I suspect because I was just going to put this on um, DCC and that sound chip came up and I was like yep I'll give that a go now I've got a 1.8 set of shells but I haven't actually got a 108 sorry, um, chassis um, the shell might possibly fit onto here but then I haven't got any carriages for the 108 and I do like this 101 so that aside um, we'll carry on with this so the cocktail sticks are kind of wedged in there you can see what I've done there right and the idea is this chassis then should lift out. You've got to be careful with all these details here. Try and get onto something that's fairly substantial, I guess. What you could, I, I try and avoid using a screwdriver because you just don't want to mark the plastic. I'm just going to get my nail. You see this little ledge here on that chassis? That's what my nail is under there, between that and the body. I'm just going to come this side and hopefully we can work it out. No, nope. so there you go. I'm not going to edit this. I want you to see how hard it is to get into these versus a pool type chassis where it basically just falls off. How most people are expected to do this to change a chip, I'm not entirely sure. This is very awkward. You can see it's coming, it's just very, she's holding on. There we go, right. So just keep putting put cocktail sticks in basically, until it pops. Let me zoom out of touch for you. Okay, so that shell is popped, you can see how it's popped a line there. So it's just a case of pulling it out like this, look. What we got. Okay, so we've got our chassis. And we have got our shell, and I don't know if you just saw that, this just fell out. So this is what is meant to hold the speaker from Graham Farish, if you have a sound fitted version of this actually. Because you can buy one, but they're 300 and something quid. Whereas a YouTube, um, Sound chip is around 100 quid, and this loco, I don't know actually how much these, these would be, maybe 150, maybe, and chance, well that, already that's 100 quid cheaper isn't it, even if this loco was 200 quid, and you bought U2's sound chip, and a speaker in this and that, it all depends on what you want to go for, but this is the way I'm doing it, um, I think basically you could do it yourself and get it a bit cheaper, but I don't know what the grain fresh sounded like. Uh, so this I'm probably not going to use. But I'll put that to one side though, I won't chuck it away. Uh, and what we've got now is interesting. Um, so on the class 150, I do believe that this area here, that is actually moulded and that's actually part of the casting for the chassis. Um, but the 150 looks very similar to this. That is actually 
weight, added weight to the loco. Yep, that can come out. If I need to add weight later on, I will do, but that's in my way. Um, we've got a blanking chip, so that's going to come out. Put that to one side. Now, our decoder. Um, now, what I could do, um, this is me, so I pin one this side and pin six over here for the socket. Now I know pin one is that silver mark there for me, so it'll go in there like that. Uh, which it will actually just, oh yeah, that's cool. That will just go in there. Um, now, if I wanted to save a bit more space, I could actually solder these directly to the PCB, um, or even more so, um, I could probably, I could probably remove the PCB. Um, that's a bit drastic, that's not needed. But you could solder this to the PCB if you wanted. I'm actually just going to plug it in. Make my life easy for once. There we go, that was easy, wasn't it? <laughs> wow. So I know the decoder works, the loco works, so there should be no reason this wouldn't work. Um, the next thing for me to do though, we need to put a speaker in the loco. I don't have round speakers like I think Graham Farish do there. Um, and what I'm going to do is I need to fit one of these in the loco. Um, I'm not going to be able to fit it this way round. And just looking at this, it could go a multitude of ways. There's no right or wrong way of doing it. I could fit the speaker actually in here. Um, but what I'm going to do, I think that looks pretty appetizing. Now the reason I think I can put it there is looking at this. This is the old speaker housing which is never going to get used as one. That lets me, if I'm looking at that, it shows me how high I can go. Oh wow. I'll fit in the hole almost. Um, so if I put this on that shelf at the back there, I think we've got loads of space. So I think we're going to go for that. Um, I suspect as well I could probably add a stay alive to this loco. The pickups are so good though that I'm just going to see how it runs without a stay alive. I think it's more important on shorter wheelbase locos. I'm going to go for something like this. What I think I'm going to do, I've got enough height here to go up just a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get clever with the 3D printer like we did it on the class 150 that was in the previous video so have a look at that if you want to see how to 3d model something because what I think I'm going to do is make a enclosure for the underneath of the speaker so it can sit just below the speaker will be glued to it and then the enclosure will be glued to the chassis so I'm just going to make like an L-shaped box section that this screw uh, glues to Okay guys, so this is just an overview of the modelling process that I did for the, the speaker box for that speaker. Uh, if you want to know any more details, look at the Class 150 video that I did, um, and that will show you a bit more in depth of how to get started. This, like I say, Fusion, this is Fusion 360. Um, after this, um, we'll sort of slice it, ready for the printer. Um, and what you're looking at though is I guess I did a few measurements, made the box side, then I extruded it so it was more of an object. And this bit you're looking at right now is where I was basically I hollowed out the object that I'd made, and then now all I'm doing is um, making an access hole, cutting the top out, but leaving enough of a lip so that the speaker can be glued to this. Um, this this whole enclosure, as I go on about later, is it's got to be sealed. So, once I'm happy with the perimeter that I want to keep, I'll select the centre of it like that, and I'll extrude it. There you go. And there we go, we've, we've got a perfect enclosure for our speaker. So, let me go and slice it. And slicing it is dropping it in 
lychee slicer in my case, adding supports like this. And that's just to support the parts that are, you know, hovering on the bed. And then we print it. Okay, so here we are at the printer. What I'm going to do, turn it on, comes on, bear load, USB stick with the file on it, plugs in the side on mine. Uh, I think this has got Wi Fi, so you could actually send it from your PC. However, USB stick, plug it in, leave it, do it doing its thing. Uh, and I'm just going to press print. I'm going to select the file I want, which is them speaker casings. Print. And that there is what it prints on. And that's the fluid that it prints with. Just let it get down there. Now the reason I went for this printer is because it's got, uh, not lead screws, but two linear sliders, so it's got more stability as it goes up and down. So that's the first layer it's printing. The first couple of layers take quite a while, so it's flashing an image onto that build plate that went into the fluid. It'll come up in a second, you'll hear it click almost. There you go, and it'll go back down. Do the next layer, and that's how it makes a model, it does it layer by layer. I think it's like the first six layers uh, take like 20 seconds a piece. And, but then after it's done those, it's like one and a half seconds a layer. That's why I went from well no screen, because they're faster. The only downside is you can't actually see what it's doing until it's come out. <laughs> so we'll come back in a bit. Um, it says 19 minutes there, but it's going to take longer than that. It's probably going to be an hour. Maybe not, we'll see. I'll pop back in a bit. So I'll just show you it in its, its full speed mode. Flash an image. That's it. Then it comes back out. Goes back in. Next image. Comes out, goes back in. <laughs> you get the gist. But once it gets going, it gets going. Like that is fast. But the very thin layers. Um, and that's how it is so um, good. Like that's how the quality is so good. No, that's, that's done so many layers just then. Uh, anyway, we'll pop back when we've actually got something to show you. Okay, so it's finished printing, so let's have a little look, see what we got. So on, on mine, they're all different, this is how I remove them, the pieces. And it looks like there's something there on the build plate. So the next thing you want to do is get that off and clean it up. Uh, I'm just going to get them off myself now, and then I'll show you what they look like after I've given them a bit of a clean. Okay, so what I've done is I've um, used an IPA to clean the resin off of these parts. Um, this is what we're left with. That's what's come off the build plate. Okay, so basically these should snap off like that. And that's our enclosure for the speaker now. That should fit in the loco nice. So I'll do the other two here. Now this is the beauty of it. If you do your supports properly, it should be relatively easy to take them off. If you do it wrong, then you've got a world of hurt. Um, and this is where, so a lot of people assume that 3D printing is cheap because, you know, you just print it and there you go, you've got something. Well, no, it's not cheap because actually there's time involved. My time is the money part. So, um, so I don't want to sound angry or anything. What it is is basically... I've just modelled that, I've just printed that, I've just cleaned all that, and that takes a while, you know, to, to get the stuff clean. Um, and you need to know your stuff with printing stuff, so, anyway, that, that's, that's basically what you pay for, really. What I've got in here is, 
little motor under that little disc and I'll show you this. That, that is actually a Pico turntable so it's, it's kind of never turned so much in its life. So I've got myself a janky, a janky turntable. I've raised it up. This is my UV light. I've got a tin foil in there to bounce the light around. Uh, down here I've got my power. Ta-da! And then when I turn the UV light on, you can see the light just coming out of here. Now I'll, I'll leave that for like 10, 20 minutes, something like that, and then I know they're cured. And that's what I use instead of a washing cure. I wash them and I cure them. Okay, so we've got these enclosures. Now, I'm pretty happy with how these have turned out. They are a solid volume, so there's no holes in this, which is exactly what I was after. Now, what I'm gonna do is aim to have the these two corner solder pads, I'm gonna have them um, decoder side of the loco, not th down here, as in not, not this way around. Um, but first things first, what I've got to do is be really careful here uh, and super glue this to this. The best way I've found of doing that is get some super glue on a cocktail stick and I'm just going to run it around the edge of the speaker, more on the outside of the speaker than the inside because we don't want any super glue <laughs> to go onto this metallic piece because that is the... Um, plate that moves the airwaves basically that is the speaker there's a little diaphragm around it in there which you can't see it's sort of protected so i've just got to remember which way to stick it around um anyway we're going to start gluing that on i think i know that enclosure is going to fit the speaker i've just done a dry run it would be called uh, just to check it fits now i'm just going to dab the super glue over here and Sorry, I've probably just missed all of that on the camera. But I've got a nice little bead of super glue around it. Now quickly, uh, tabs are there. Run it this way around. And I think that's pretty much it. Forever she will stay. Now, the idea here is, so that, that plate moves up and down on that speaker, and imagine now, all of this is hollow inside and there's air, trapped, almost, and that's going to shake and vibrate this air. Um, so this is, is one mil deep, and I've, it's, it's also recessed enough so that it can move the air to this area. I've only done this because I've never really had a chance to make a bigger air volume. I would imagine this might sound a bit bassy or it might make it louder. Anywho, this is sealed, this side of, of the speaker, this whole side. Now, on this side, you see them corners just there? Well, that's where the noise actually comes from. Or, or it doesn't, shall we say. The vibrations emulate, like it shakes the case, but the air is allowed to rush in and out through these holes. So it does a bit of both. It's a, almost like a little a miniature subwoofer with a ported, four ported box, um, holes. So we'll pass super glue actually just to off the screen a little bit, because I think what we're going to do next is actually glue it in the loco. So bring that back. Oh, I love doing these. Something new, you know? Uh, so this I want to live. I'm not worried about sliding the decoder in and out. Uh, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna live there. Now I could have made the box actually deeper and a bit longer, but considering I normally just put a bit of plastic card over the speaker, I think anything's better than nothing. I have got myself. Um, I, I just had this kicking around. It's only a little amount. This is called black tack. It's a lot stickier than white tack or blue tack. And actually what I'm going to do, because this is such a new loco, I, I could put super glue on there, but it'd be for really just to, to, to harm the loco. Now putting this on, you could probably use double-sided tape to do the same thing. I think super glue would be the better bet. 
but I like the idea. There we go. You see, I'm just mushing it around. I like the idea that I can pull this off if I have to. Just kind of fanning, fanning it around. Just a little blob. So that should. There we go. That'll be enough to hold it. And it doesn't go past the end of the um, buffer beam there. The next thing I'm going to do is try and get these purple wires up to the speaker. Um, what I've done is you'll see the speakers just come, the wires just coming out of here to the speaker. So they were coming out here. I've fed one underneath, and then it comes back up and round. As you can see, that one there feeds underneath and then comes up. And I've just snipped the wires to a, an appropriate length so that I can just pre-tin the ends of these wires which is what we're going to do now um, and I need to also just solder pre-tin the speaker p uh, points there. Okay so I've just whipped the shell off the, the the dummy and this is what she looks like okay it's got lights one end this is the front end and here's the blanking plug and power car is gonna I'm gonna consist this with this and consist means that's gonna follow what this does except what I do then is I'll flip the lights on this one and in order to do that I need a DCC chip in this one um, so I'm gonna just take this out so here we go, it's a little gauge master chip. Now this pin here is number one. And on our chipboard there, number one is over this side, so I need to turn it around. So pin one is here, and pin one is there. And this will go in like this. Now uh, what I've done off screen is I've um, already set this chip up. Let's go over to the track. Loco is on the track. Now the first thing I'm going to do before anything, like testing sound, is just move it. Um, so that's good. Okay, that's good. Uh, lights. So that's forward running light on the bottom. These two down here. And the top ones should always be on. Reverse light going in 3, 2, 1. Yep or uh, back of the train directional light. Okay, so I jumped ahead a little bit. Um, what I've done is I've put the shells back on. Now I've set this up so hopefully you can see what I've done here. This took a while because of the amount of CVs that are on the chips, especially the Zimo chip. Uh, this six pin chip was quite straightforward. Um, so basically what we should have, I'll just turn this on, we'll turn the lights on. Now these two are talking to each other, this one is following what this one does. And you see the headlights here are on, or the forward running lights are on. Um, so imagine this lo this dummy's the other way around, and you've got the tail lights on. So then if I change the direction of this loco, that should change, because it's copying this but doing the inverse of it. <laughs> so, change direction now. So this one's now going backwards, and then that one's going to be ending up going forwards and you can flip them around just like that so uh, what else we got I guess really that's about it um, you can turn the lights on and off and I'm sure there's some funky uh, things you can do with the lights but I'm just happy that they're working um, it's taken me a while to get this right it shouldn't normally be this hard. I think basically I had some issues where the decoder wasn't quite touching one of the light pins inside. Um, so I've, I went through the CVs quite a lot. Uh, don't worry if I'm losing you. But that's it basically. Um, you need a decoder in this really to follow this. There's no other way of doing it. Um, I think you could probably leave the blanking plug in the dummy. But what you'll have is... Uh, it it would just stay illuminated. You won't have any control over the what the dummy's doing. Um, 
So really, for the sake of, say, about a tenner, maybe a little bit more, just get yourself a six-pin decoder and put it in your dummy and just make it copy what this one's doing and then just reverse the light direction and the jobs are good. So let's have a little bit of a run and see what it's, see what it's like. Okay, first things first then, let's start her up. <laughs> 